Hi Claudio. Hi Claudio. It's very good to have you. Welcome nice to our to conference. You. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, Claudio uh, is a business development manager for Applied Graphene Materials and they are the first European company, first European graphene company to have floated on the AIM market. Uh, so what's so unique about your graphene products? Claudio. What is unique about our graphene uh, boils down to the way we make it. Um, you know, you can have two flavors of graphene. You can have graphene in films and graphene in powders. We belong to the category of powders. Now, if you look how you can make powders, you mostly make graphene powder, also called technically nanoplateless, by taking graphite, which is a stack of layer of graphene, and separating those individual layers out. So you explode, you exfoliate the graphite to get graphene. Well, our company took a completely different approach from the very beginning. We didn't want to build in this dependence on the supply of graphite, and we chose a synthetic approach. We have a proprietary method, which we call a bottom-up method. We basically start from the carbon atom, a source of carbon atom, and we use that to assemble graphene from scratch. In our case, it's an ethanol solution that's used as a precursor material to provide the, uh, the carbon atoms that then under certain condition of temperature, pressure, and so on, in our reactor are assembled through a self-assembly process into graphene nanoplatelets. These are then collected at the other end of the, the reactor. And the beauty of that is that not only the process does not rely on uh, graphite, it's a continuous flow process. What it means is that as long as the tab that injects the precursor material is open, you will get graphene at the other end. So it's intrinsically a non-batch process which lends itself uh, quite nicely to scaling up. And that's what we've been doing in the first, uh, let me count now, it's almost three years we are around, <laughs> in the first wow. three years of life. And we continue to do that because uh, we want also to be prepared for a growth of the market. So we have gone from a you know, few grams a, a week to a few grams a day to tens of grams a day now to a point where we had a machine capable of making a ton a year. And now we are looking beyond that because we are mostly looking at volume applications where uh, graphene will basically be used as a multifunctional additive to add a range of property to a host material. And from the beginning, for this reason, we focus on sectors such as uh, uh, composites, uh, paints and coatings, or lubricants and functional fluids. So application where you can see a small fraction of graphene being dispersed in a lar larger matrix, bringing the properties that are typical of the uniform continuous uh, graphene film. Just by using these fragments of graphene as a carrier of those properties. Well, thanks for that, Claudio. And, you know, you've been working on the ground in the graphene industry. So what is the feel in the industry in general uh, around the world? I think, I, you know, it's interesting. Um, I've been involved with quite a few um, cycles of hypes in the past. So technologies that all of a sudden caught the attention of the large public or the entire industry sector and went through one, two years of really um, heightened attention and, and, and activity around, and then at some point that fades out. What I'm seeing with graphene is that if that is, has to happen, it certainly will be a much longer cycle, because it, now it's year on year that I see systematically a growth on interest. If anything, what we see is that the, uh, the customer we talk to, they are more and more knowledgeable about the field, which tells me that they are investing energy and resources into doing their homeworks, into building internal expertise. So they're coming to us with more and more know-how, more and more specific ideas as to what they want to do with graphene. And also, there's a lot of opportunity being open that were not clear in the beginning. And this general interest for graphene, I think, is kind of opening new doors for graphene application. And I think we're still fully in this growth phase for the opportunities. Mm. And in any innovation cycle, you see a divergence and a convergent mm. phase. I, okay, I think we're still fully in this divergent phase. Well, by the day, more opportunities are spotted than ruled out. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a good situation to be. Very good. And for the good or for the bad, there are a lot of comparisons being made between uh, carbon nanotubes right. and graphene. So what is your stand on that? How do you see it? Yes, uh, that's a very good question because uh, it's not surprising. A lot of potential customers do start the conversation with us exactly from this very statement. Oh, we have dealt a lot with carbon nanotubes. How is this different? Well, I'll tell you, to begin with, carbon nanotubes always had a, a fundamental problem, the dispersion of the carbon nanotubes. If you try and disperse them to make use of their property, you'll see the 
first you struggle to debundle them because they tend to come in bundles. And then once you debundle them and disperse them uniformly, they will tend to reaggregate at some point. So the dispersibility, if there is such a word, <laughs> the ability to disperse the material into an host matrix and have it there to convey the property you're after was a, really a showstopper for a lot of the um, carbon nanotube application. I'm very glad to say that certainly for our graphene, dispersibility is not an issue. We can take, and here give a few examples of things, we can take our graphene in pretty much any polymer uh, matrix, in any solvent, in aqueous solution, in lubricants, base oils and so on, with some effort but certainly in, in a way that makes it totally doable at scale and, and, and a small quantity for R&D labs. So first of all we see the first advantage not having this hurdle of using the material, putting it into the place where you want to deploy it. In terms of property, we do expect, expect to see an, a bit more of the same, if we can say it that way. Um, what I mean by that, we do expect to see a bit more electrical conductivity, a bit more thermal conductivity, but in particular, a bit more mechanical properties. If you think of the morphology of graphene, it does offer a larger surface for interaction with the matrix of the polymer, hence you would expect that whatever the properties you're trying to impart to the polymer, they will be facilitated by the stronger interaction, by the larger interaction between mm. polymer matrix and, and, the, and the material itself. So in, a, in a nutshell, the way I see it is that you can use it contrary to the carbon nanotube. It's not so mm. difficult to make use of it. It creates a stable, workable dispersion suitable for industrial application, and it should bring a, a few more enhancements to the property that have been seen with carbon nanotubes. Excellent. So as one last question, I'm going to ask you a very, very general question. Yes. This, fast forward five years. Yeah. Where is the industry going to be and where are you going to be? <laughs> Very good question. Uh, I suspect, like in many industries, you always see a plethora of company, you know, starting off the, the blocks in the beginning. Um, and 10 years down the line, you may see a few growing significant market share with some degree of specialization, but you won't see 20, 30, 40, 50 companies. Uh, necessarily um, being uh, established and penetrated a significant uh, portion of the market. So I expect, in other words, a degree of consolidation to happen, which is a sign of mature industry. Um, I, I would expect the graphene uh, supplier to be integral part of uh, value chain of the chemical industry, being a coating paints of the polymer industry, all the way to the end user of this automotive and aerospace. And I actually would expect a lot to be happening in the electronic sector. And not just the fancy electronic component side of it, but you know, all the heat management, the reinforcement of the cases, all the things that go with an electronic product, which is a highly integrated system in the end. There are plenty of opportunities there for graphene. So, <laughs> sorry. Yes, here we have a a little bit of a, uh, an example of different uh, ways in which we uh, support our customers. Although we are in the business of make, manufacturing and selling graphene, uh, we need to make graphene available as quickly as possible in a format that can test. So you see a carbon fiber reinforced resin where the resin is doped with graphene. Uh, why you may want graphene in a carbon fiber reinforcement, this radar reinforcement, it will still help at least in the direction orthogonal to the carbon fiber to avoid some of the brittleness and some of the, the, the weaknesses, if you can call it that way, of carbon fiber and fossil material, where the fiber is not working for you. Um, you have a material in a resin here, for instance, and this is to allow people to compound other material, and this is basically a heavily loaded carrier for master batching and for compounding. Um, you can see here example of uh, um, epoxy resin, which can be used for tensile tests. This is a way which you create a, a pool test and you see how much more energy it takes, uh, much more force it takes to break that piece of material because you've introduced the, uh, your graphene. But we can also create solid uh, material like this, it's a compressed graphene. Which so is Claudio, do you make these uh, intermediaries yourself? Yes, we have a few more here. I mean, these are example of uh, uh, 
marine primers containing graphene. This is the normal material, the one with graphene. So yes, we, we tend to have, all we want to do is to help potential customer accelerate the test and development mm. process. That makes a lot of sense. So we are not in competition with them in developing application because it's not in our interest to compete with our customer, but anything we can do to accelerate their test and validation, we'll do it. And now we're building a bit of experience, so we start seeing recurring requests, <laughs> which makes the whole cycle also faster on our side. Otherwise, very happy to learn whatever is needed. Yeah. Very good, well, uh, thank you very much, Claudio. Oh, a pleasure uh, being a here. Pleasure to have you. Great show, as always. To meet you. Thank yeah. you very much.